Greetings. I don't know how well you can see me. Or anything. Uh, greetings. I don't know how well you can see me, but uh, hopefully you can see something. Move this project out of the way. We'll get to it in a little bit. But uh, so where I'm at here in the garage, this is an insulated garage, or at least for the most part, it's insulated. Um, except there's one minor problem. Like right now, it is 44 degrees outside. As a result, it's a little cold in here. <laughs> so, basically, it's not tech related, but house heater. <laughs> I'm hoping eventually to put a mini split out here, and if I end up buying a better place here in the coming years that um, can have a better heating, cooling solution, this will get me by in the Winter time, summertime may just be hot out here. We'll uh, we'll see if it's too hot. I'll do shenanigans and projects in the house, and I'll just find a corner or something to use. Um, but for now, Sam's Club ceramic heater is my friend. Freezing my ass off is no longer my friend. Let's just get this thing unboxed. I'm not really a connoisseur, per se, of uh, heaters, but I can say, given um, <clears throat> family members past, that may or may not be my father, he used to collect these things like they were <clears throat> collectible items. So I have, in fact, experienced having a lot of heaters. How is this related to what I do on the channel? It's kind of not, kind of is. I mean, I'm, I'm stuck out here doing projects, right? And to do some of these projects requires a little bit of horsepower, but monitors and gear and power strips and stuff like that, and so... At the end of the day, I need a space to do this. And in order to have that, I need to go outside. It is, uh, you get my sharp and pointy object. Of course, you always cut towards you in a aggressive and bloodshedding manner. plastic murdering is going on. And of course you want to make sure you cut the end of the electrical cords so you can't plug it in. Obviously I am being sarcastic. Seems legit. And of course, the first thing you should do is fall over. The first thing you should do is take out the remote, see if there's any instructions. Honestly, I'm just curious if this came with batteries or not. Oh, of course not, so I get to have the fun of going inside and finding them. I probably won't do that. You should always take the instructions and throw them away, like the Chinese instructions they are. We'll just, we'll just pretend for now we don't need the remote. I'll just bring batteries out here. Unless I have some. Hmm. 
Thought I had batteries. Maybe I don't. It's probably a good idea I don't. Does this just go on the back here? What, what's going on here? Well, it looks like I make Lego pieces out of the base. And then this has a thingy that just kind of... Oh, there we go. Once you've lined everything up. Oh, huh, then it just pops together. Then Bob is, in fact, your uncle. Pretty simple. We set fans and temperatures and levels. And this is all to see if this is going to be enough for me. We'll find out. I want you to know this is all so we can play with this Microsoft Surface tablet today. Uh, for now, we're going to put this into a power strip. I don't need this workstation monitor thing today. I'm just going to unhook it. We're just going to hook you into the... Um, oh, you know what? Even Is the cord going to reach that far? Hold on. Just barely not. Um, I might be willing though to do the right thing and use a server rack as a go between. this work? So we're on H1. Sixty-five. It's forty-four out here. Freezing my ass off for you people. Now this remote does go with its really cheap remote doing its butt over here. So I'm gonna put it in the way over here and we're gonna say that's gonna work nice. Ooh I don't know if I need this much heat though. Oh, I see. It's got high and low. Fancy. Well, now we can get to content. All right. So today's magical package, now that we're done heating up the space we're going to be working in, is going to be a little project of mine that is, to put it lightly, jank as shit. Um, jank as hell. So today, I'm going to start here again. So today, now that we've heated up the space I'm in, and I should be able to not freeze to death in the 40s, um, we're going to work on a project, or look at a project I've been working on, that I'm just going to call the Jank Surface. See, in this little pouch, if I open it up here, is in fact a Microsoft Surface product. Microshaft Surface. It is a Surface Go. Do not worry about the weird glitter on it. Um, I'm straight, I swear. <laughs> oh my lord, that screen. I apologize now. I don't even have a good way to fix that. Um, 
Unfortunately, this thing spends a lot of time near my bedside, so. <sighs> oh my gosh, that's so reflective. Hold on a moment. So I want you to know I can't make this shit up. Here I am, trying to film. And this device, I've never run it below 50% battery. I'm not one of those people. If I see it at 50%, I'm like trying to uh, plug the thing in. Because at my bedside, I'm not here to run the battery super low. And it has gone to 50 or 50% before. So here we are. Trying to make a video. And... Uh, the damn battery goes from 64% to your battery is critically low and your system is about to shut down. Good job. If this thing had a replaceable battery, I'd probably replace it at this point. And you see it hibernated. Boy, she is not happy. It's like we're going to start from the RAM disk. That means she has totally crashed out. Resuming from hibernation. I've never seen this screen before, but I do have it set to do so. Okay then. Well, I'll see you on the desktop in just a moment. Yep, so it doesn't look like this thing's going to record audio either. See, I don't understand what's even going on here, because this should be working. And this is the kind of stupid stuff I've had to put up with this week. So you can see my battery is at like nothing, two hours to charge. I mean, I'll even open up uh, Slimbook Battery here, which is what I use for power management on Linux. If we go to battery... It says I'm at 76% capacity. So like, I don't know what's going on. I get that means I'm worn out at the same time. You know, maybe not. So, I don't know. So we're just gonna go ahead and go into Citizen settings. I have some pretty high scaling on here because this is a small device. It's only 10 inches, so it's hard for me to see. And yeah, so you can see we're running LMDE. LMDE stands for Linux Mint Debian Edition, and it's literally what it sounds like. It's the Debian Edition of Linux Mint. Um, I chose it on here because honestly, I knew this thing wouldn't get updated very often. It's going to sit in a drawer. Um, it's going to get used in bed a handful of times a week. You know, just to, just to browse the internet, calm down for the night, get ready to go to bed. Um, on rare occasion, it might play a YouTube video, nothing super serious. Um, and you can kind of see, go to Btop, we are two cores, four threads, I'm pretty confident. It says four CPUs, so like if I go into NeoFetch. Um, this Pentium 4415U, I'm pretty sure, is just two cores, four threads. Uh, we'll Google that in a second here. But it's running pretty reasonably well. I don't have any complaints with it. You know, if I open up a browser and go to Google, it works just fine. Um, it runs my software. I've got a Jellyfin server that, you know, on rare occasion, if I wanted to, you know... I could load up and watch my movies, like, like it works pretty well. Awesome. Potato quality. Potatoes. This is a lovely 640x480 we're getting to enjoy here, and uh, you won't notice it in a moment because I'll drop you to my desktop. Um, 
that's pretty much this surface in a nutshell, you know. It's not the greatest tablet in the world. It's not the best in the world. But... As long as you can still see me. It is a first-gen Surface Go. And... Hold on one moment. So yeah, it's a first-gen Surface Go. Um, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to say about it. If I scroll all the way down, I've pretty much got everything for it. I don't have this Microsoft mouse because literally screw that. Those Surface Mobile mouses are awful. I'm not a Microsoft snob. I literally bought this tablet for pennies of what it was worth. I think I bought it for like $75 and the guy had it listed for $250. I can't even believe you took my my uh, offer, to be quite frank. But yeah, it came with cert Windows 10 in S mode, which is just cancer. Um, don't if you have that, just wipe it out. It is not <laughs> that is not Windows. That is Microsoft Edge OS. It is terrible. I will fire it up in a virtual machine to poke around at it and make fun of it, but just don't. Um, it does have a really nice display. It is a 1800 by 1200. It does require some display scaling, but I've never had any issues with it. Um, I don't know where they get this battery life from. Even on Windows, this thing is barely four hours. Um, I would love to see where they get that from because you would never get that out of this thing. Even with good power management on Linux, I'm still staring at about two to three hours with light usage. Um, so you got the Pentium processor. We've got that eight gigs of RAM. Um, like I said, I do have the Surface keyboard and whatnot. So what do they say in here for the Surface battery life? It's connect conducted with a my model basically. Full discharge during Wi-Fi associated with the network and auto brightness was disabled. Battery life, yeah, there. I don't believe them. Not at all. That is not conclusive. But you might ask, if you actually buy a Surface device right now and you were to put Linux on it, you'd notice about mm, half the device is not working. Your keyboards might not work. Um, if it does, it might be glitchy. The cameras are not going to work. And the cameras on this thing decide what day they're going to work. Uh, for this recording, I did turn on the camera and it just kept dying. So the recording is of dubious quality, as always. Um, and the uh, the camera wouldn't even function and I don't know why. It was working last night, it was just really dim, which is what I wanted to show, that the brightness on that thing is just awful <laughs> on Linux. It works in Windows just fine. Something with the firmware blobs in Linux doesn't work too well. This could still be an issue with running a Debian-based OS instead of Ubuntu-based. Eh. Um, whatever. Um, I'm not going to reload it because it's functional and it allows me to do things with a tablet. So I always wanted a Linux tablet and there aren't really any choices on the market. I would consider jumping OSs if I could find something with a better tablet UI. Um, there is possibilities of that in KDE Plasma with like Plasma TV or Plasma Big Screen. Um, I will look at Cutefish or, oh, there was one called Jing OS that was for a Jing pad that was for x86. Um, those are straight out of China and I don't really trust China. I have my own issues with that. Um, at least I don't trust their software anyway. Plus both distributions are they were supported for a while, and this is why I never hop on the Chinese distribution bandwagon. They were supported for about six months to a year, maybe two years, and then things started getting really sketchy, and then all the developers just disappeared. So take that for what you will. But one of the projects responsible for why I can get it on here is the Linux Surface Project. Do give merits to these guys. They do amazing work. 
Um, just, I mean, look at the list of supported devices, by the way. And they have a feature matrix that honestly is pretty dang accurate. Um, even mine, I am a Surface Go 1 right here. And a lot of things work. Now you don't get the performance modes. The cameras are iffy, which is why it has a little O. But yeah, they're right. Most everything else works. The touch screen. Um, I don't have tablet mode slash auto rotate working. I think I'm missing a package somewhere and I don't know what. But I can't get it to turn auto-rotate. Like if you're reading a manga or something, you might want to turn it sideways. I can't get that to work. So maybe it's mint. Maybe it's cinnamon. Not being compatible with, you know, a tablet-like operating system. I don't mind it, but the sensors are at least supported. Um, and honestly, it, it doesn't work too bad. I could have it a lot worse on this tablet. Um, but as you saw, it is not perfect. The battery crashes about a third of the time using it. So usually I leave this thing plugged in these days. I usually run it to about 50%, but I guess today it decided against that. Um, and yeah, it's not a terrible device. And I would like to take it somewhere and roadkill this thing. Uh, that's some, one of the things about this channel is when I go on trips and whatnot, I want to record this for you. I want to show you guys road killing old technology you know literally sketching a piece of hardware together and taking it on a road trip is the most fun you can have especially when you don't actually need the hardware to begin with yeah that's pretty much all i had for today i just wanted to do a quick video on this stuff and honestly just talk about you know, sometimes you can buy stuff like this and it just doesn't work as well as you'd hoped. Um, I had hoped to use this as a little bit of a drawing tablet, uh, maybe do some basic stuff, but now I kind of just use it to browse the internet. Stuff I can do on my iPad, which is probably ten times faster. Um, just happens. I don't, I don't throw any stones or anything, but I like revitalizing old tech like this. Somebody bought this device, realized it was a turd with windows on it, and decided just to chuck it in the trash. Is that really what you should be doing? You know, I've got tons of old machines down here that I used them up, but I've got more on the way. I've just, you know, one of the cooler projects in the pipeline I'd like to do is I've got an old compact from our church over here, and, the, you know, the IT guy over there, he just wanted rid of it. He didn't, he didn't want it to stick around, and I agreed with him. But it's so old that it's not really usable in the modern age. I mean, the Core Duo in it itself is, or Core 2 Duo in it, or a Pentium Duo, I guess it says on the case. Um, it's just not very usable, and unfortunately, that means I can't, you know, upsell it to somebody else or give it to somebody else because it'd just be a useless computer. It, it barely is able to run XFCE in it. That, um, even Linux can't really handle it, so... Um, what I'm hoping to do with that one is I've got drawers up here full of hard drives and I'm considering turning it into a little uh, server project out here. The proof that you don't need a rack mount even though I do have some stuff that's rack mount. Um, I'm not using it as servers yet. But that you can create your own little server for whatever project you're on. And it can be headless. You can just have it plug in. It'll see the network. And everything will just work. So I look forward to trying that. Um, we'll see where that goes. I look forward to doing little projects like that too. As well as honestly just getting to play around with old junk like this. Because this stuff shouldn't go to the landfill. You know, this stuff should be coming, being having Linux installed on it, and sent out into the world for somebody else to enjoy. And if it's just me that gets to enjoy it, then fine. I'll enjoy the crap out of it. And when it dies, I'll properly recycle it. I'd, I'd rather not see that being a landfill for 50 or 100 years um, with the combustible battery in it. So I like to just have fun with the e-waste that we have running around. That's why I end up with a lot of free computers. People will buy new ones and I'll take the e-waste and try to do something with it. You know, I've got a box back here that was supposed to be a project. Turns out, uh, Linux isn't compatible with everything, and that's probably another uh, rant I'll go on another day. So, um, if you like the video, go ahead and like the video. 
if you want to subscribe, go ahead. I try to turn out one of these a month, but that'll be based upon what I have left. Uh, then I'll take a little break for a while, and we'll come back. And I think I've probably got I got one Windows machine that I'm definitely going to convert over to Linux. Um, I've kind of lost my need to have Windows on the machine, and um, the other kick of it is uh, we'll get to sit down together and uh, get to rebuild this boy. Um, I put it in an old case I had out here, but I just rebuilt my gaming PC in a Fractal Design North case. So my old Corsair case is sitting on my lawnmower over there, and so I will do my best to record and put out a video of rebuilding this machine, its specs, the operating system Linux Mint, um, and everything running together. I might even throw extra hard drives in it. Maybe it'll be my garage server out here permanently. So uh, that should always be good and fun. That's all I have for today. Peace.